Welcome to Programming in Modern C++. We are in week 9, we are starting it with module M41. In the last week, we have discussed uh, some key concepts of uh, C++, particularly in terms of exceptions and error handling, introducing the try throw catch mechanism. We introduced generic programming or meta programming through templates in C++ and we specifically took a look at uh, a special type of objects or classes called function objects or functors and uh, we will see extensive use of those in the modules coming hereafter. In the module today, we are going to discuss about file handling and input output in C and uh, particularly understand the text and binary input output, how it is to be done in C. This is the outline and will be available on the left pen as always. So, in C, the language by itself does not have any support for input output. Input output is provided totally in terms of C standard library. And uh, you know that uh, it has a header stdio standard io dot h, which needs to be included in a source file for doing any kind of file or terminal or printer input output operations. It provides uh, many functions and uh, the functions can be broadly categorized in terms of opening and closing files formatted as well as unformatted uh, uh, input output, uh, block input output, file positioning, certain uh, checking of file status, system file operations and so on. There is a long list and we will discuss some of the representative functions here which are more commonly used in regular programming. So, the first thing we introduce here is what is file and what is stream the basic notion of stream is very critical and actually C was uh, a pioneer in introducing the concept of uh, stream which eventually got imbibed into Unix and it is all there everywhere. We understand what is a file, it is an external collection of related data which is treated as a, as a unit and uh, more often a file is uh, treated as a sequential data structure which means that uh, starting from the beginning of the file, you can uh, keep on moving forward reading or writing and uh, you get the uh, subsequent uh, data elements that exist, though it is possible to treat it also as a kind of random access by positioning the particular reader. Now, stream in contrast is kind of a abstract concept which uh, the name naturally derives from the natural English word of stream which keeps on flowing. So, it is something which can be associated with uh, a physical device like a terminal or a printer or a file stored in the auxiliary memory. Right. So, when we have uh, for example, these input devices like keyboard or, or file, then from that we create a input text stream because these are input devices and that brings in the data into the memory. Similarly, the other way the data residing in the memory can be put through the output text stream which is a which is kind of a continuous one in this in a stream you do not go back you just keep on doing things forward and uh, that can be subsequently stored in a file or displayed in a monitor or maybe printed on a printer and so on. Now, how do we read or write text files? You are already familiar to 
a good extent doing it particularly on the console. So, for doing a text file, we have the data represented in some standard in the form of some standard type, it could be an integer data, a character data, a string data and so on. So, you take that and you apply a conversion function, a conversion function so that the data can be suitably represented as a sequence of characters, this is important because a text file is simply a sequence of characters and then you put that in your destination or the or in the reverse direction if you have a text file which is a sequence of characters, you take each character one by one and then apply the appropriate conversion function, you are you will be more familiar with this uh, in the name of format uh, specification and convert that into a form which is representable in the memory according to the corresponding type and you store that in the type. So, this is the basic uh, idea the of, of uh, doing any I O with a, uh, te with a text uh, file. It can be used for formatted input output or unformatted ones like uh, character input output or even string input output can be done with the text files. The other form of input output which is available uh, through the C standard library function are uh, kind of direct or block input output. So, you have the data represented in the memory as before. Then you have a block write function that is it check takes the data as the chunk as it exists and puts it to the destination. Mind you the difference here is it is not unlike here below is what you do for the text file. So, unlike doing a conversion it is not doing a conversion it takes the data in the binary form and puts it to the destination directly without trying to do any kind of conversion. So, this could be formatted, this could be this could be unformatted, this could be written simply in the binary form and so on. Similarly, the reverse happens from a source, you do a block transfer of whatever bit patterns you get and put that in the in the memory. So, these are the two broad types of input output that is available in terms of C functions. So, just to understand uh, the text and binary files in little bit uh, more depth, suppose I have a short integer 768 and I have a character in um, character A, capital A, uppercase A, right. Now, if you represent it in terms of a text file, what you will do is you will take each one of this 7, 6 and 8, 7, 6 and 8, each one you take as a character and you put the ASCII code of the character in the file. So, here is the ASCII code of 7, for your convenience I have written the ASCII codes here. You can see this is the ASCII code of 7 being written in 8 bits, next is the ASCII code of 6 being written in 8 bits, next is the ASCII code of 8 being written in 8 bits and then the code of ASCII code of uh, uppercase A which is 65 is written here. So, it is being written character by character. So, a text file every um, uh, component of the text file is a character, typically it is uh, 8 bit character that is 1 byte character, it could be unicode 2 byte characters as well that th those kind of text files are also possible. In contrast if I say a file is a binary one, then it will represent this number in its binary form that is as it is stored in the memory. How will it be stored in the memory? This is the entire binary representation. So, 768 as we can see it needs uh, 2 bytes because uh, 1 byte can keep up to 255. So, 768 is more than that, it will keep, uh, it will need 2 bytes which can keep up to 16 k numbers and therefore, if you see this is the higher order byte which is here this is the lower order byte which is here. So, in a binary file you are not representing these characters, but you are representing the value as a whole here the value 768. Whereas, when it comes to the character A, since character A is an individual data, it has its ASCII code. So, the character A is represented as before, there is no difference in that. So, that is the basic difference between text file and binary file. 
examples are like uh, any program source we are writing is a is a text file naturally, uh, but uh, an image that we are uh, click image that we display is a binary file because it does not have characters it does has the bit patterns of different intensity values. Similarly, even uh, say uh, something I mean just to be clear uh, suppose uh, you have a doc file uh, doc or docx file the word file. Now, you when you visualize it through the word you will find that uh, it displays you text, but that is not actually a text file. The, the viewer is showing you as a text, but along with that it is also showing you different annotations like uh, some uh, words may be bold, some words may be italicized, there are uh, alignment uh, pads, there is uh, paragraph separators and all that which are actually not text character information. So, if you if you actually ask a doc file or a docx file is actually a binary file too. Just to check uh, what you can do is you can uh, in, in uh, uh, say windows you can use a notepad application to open a docx file. You will find that you are not seeing the text as you are familiar to see you will see a whole lot of you know you know garbage nonsense characters because notepad necessarily is a text editor. So, it tries to any file it opens it tries to separate it punctuate it in 8 bits together and represent it as a character, but the representation inside the word file is not in terms of the ASCII codes they are in terms of other symbols and, and binary values. So, you will see that garbage, but if you open a program source file through notepad you will see a very nice uh, you know uh, nice text that comes in. So, that is the basic difference and, and the, that is the reason that we do need both of these to be uh, available. Now, every file is associated with a mode that is uh, you can either do input to a file do input from a file or you can do output to a file. So, there are this is specified by certain flags read write flags. So, when you associate a stream with a file you have to specify which mode are you using. So, you can read write are the two dominant modes. So, if the file has been opened which means that it has been associated with a stream then in that you can do a uh, you can do a read if you have opened it in the read mode that is you are taking inputs from it. You can do write if you have opened it in the write mode. When will the read be allowed if you have opened it in the read mode, but if you have opened a file in the write mode you will not be allowed to read from that it will be an error. Similarly, write will be allowed if you have opened the file in the write mode, but read will not be allowed. If the file is being opened in the read mode it must exist otherwise you will have an error, but in the write mode it will not need to exist. It, if it exists it will be cleared all contents will be cleared and overwritten new and if it does not exist a file will be created. So, this is the basic uh, difference between the read and write mode. There are other modes like append which is uh, pretty much like um, uh, write, but uh, it does some different uh, behavior as you can as you can uh, see in terms of uh, here. For example, if you open in append mode you will not be able to write you will be able to append only that is it will happen. So, you can see how, how that uh, that goes on this is the view of the stream uh, that you have here and you have open means you have put a marker on it. The marker which remembers in this sequential order where you are. So, when you do it in the read mode it will always put the marker at the beginning because you have to start reading from the beginning. When you do it in the write mode it will also have it in the beginning, but you can see in the read mode you expect content to be there in the write mode there will be no content. If there were, were contents when you open it in the write mode that contents is purged out. Whereas, if you open it in the append mode it already has content 
and you are putting more to it. So, it is like append mode is important uh, because if you do not write the entire file in one go, you write some data and then maybe some other program writes some more data, then maybe again your program writes some more data. You cannot do it by the right mode because the moment you open it by the right mode, everything that you had written earlier it purged. In append mode that purging is not done, but as much as has been written, the file marker will go right after that and start writing from there. So, this is, um, uh, this is these are the basic uh, three modes, then there are plus modes on those which says that read and something more. So, you can see what are the different behaviors I have written down here in some cases like if it something is opened in uh, R plus then read of course, is allowed, but write we, if it is opened in uh, W plus then also you can you are able to read. So, you can use the plus modes to do both read and write, append and read these kind of things together. Right? So, these are the basic modes and uh, particularly if you if you uh, uh, if you have uh, a binary. So, if you open a file in these modes, it will be opened as a text file. If you want to open a binary file, you will have to write b along with the mode. So, you write this, it opens as a text file, you write this, it opens as a binary file. <coughs> that is a simple rule that you will have. Now, naturally depending on in which mode uh, you have uh, opened it, the file will maintain a state based on whether you are reading or you are writing. And here in this diagram, I have uh, just uh, tried to summarize the states like if you have opened something in the read mode, you do every read, it continues to remain in the read state, but if you try to do a write, it goes to an error and the write state is not reachable because you cannot write there. Whereas, if you do it in the read plus mode, read update mode, then in the read state, it can keep on reading. You can reposition your marker, I will show how to reposition the marker and come to the write mode where you can keep on writing, you will remain in the state, you can again reposition, go back to the read mode. So, you can write some data, go back, read it again, go forward, write again and so on. But if you try to do read on a write state or write on a read state, then you will come to an error. Repositioning properly is absolutely necessary for doing the other state of operation. So, that is the basic principle. You can go through each of these diagrams and uh, based on the mode uh, chart we, I, I gave you in the last slide, you can understand these state transitions. Now, the basic uh, form of uh, I O is like this. Let us say you have a file. right? So, that file let us say physically exists in the disk system or needs to be created in the disk system. What you do? You visualize this in the program as a stream and that stream type in C is a data structure called capital FILE which is defined in the stdio.h library. This has a buffer to do your IO and it has a marker on that buffer. So, what happens when you say you have opened it, this is how you open it F open give the file name which is the this entity and give the mode you want to open for writing. So, you will give it w here right. Then what you get? You get a pointer to this file structure and everything that you do you actually refer to this pointer, pointer to the file which means that whenever you are trying to write something you are doing a printf rather f printf because you are writing to a file, then you actually the data keeps on going to the buffer. When the buffer gets full, it will write it to the file and then flush itself and again keep on. The reason it is done in this way, in this buffered way is simple that the file being on the disk, actual writing to that disk could be very, very slow. 
So, you want to avoid doing that at every instant, you keep on accumulating things in a buffer which is in the memory, which is very fast and only periodically when the buffer has become full or when you are done with the file and you want to close everything, you write that actually to the file. The same thing happens uh, in the case of read, again you again you will open let me just uh, uh, let me just uh, clear this out this part. So, what you have is uh, you are opening it in the read mode right. So, you will do read you provide the file name this must exist uh, now because you want to read and what you get is a file pointer pointer to this data structure file which contains this buffer. So, as you start reading from it which you will do by f scan f a chunk of data is actually taken from the physical disk file and the buffer is filled up and the marker remains here at the beginning. Now, as you keep on reading data the marker keeps on progressing and when it is exhausted the buffer the next chunk will again be brought from the file. So, you can understand that this particular transfer part is expensive whether you are reading or writing because it is making accesses to the disk. So, you avoid that by doing this buffered stuff which is happening automatically inside uh, the library functions right. So, the steps are simple you have to open a file which means associate a stream with a file then you do write or read depending on the mode or mixture of that read update write update uh, depending on the mode in which you have opened and then you do a close by close you dissociate. Now, you say that no more this file structure uh, pointed to the file structure will mean the, the file that you had associated it with. So, with that if you are writing then whatever data was there in the buffer is flushed onto the disk file and uh, your, your disk file is saved it will remain there forever. And the file structure is released. If you are doing a read then if anything left in the buffer that will simply be discarded and the linkage will be broken and this file structure will be released. So, this is the basic uh, process of I O rest of it are uh, nothing but uh, simple function calls. So, for example, here we are showing how to open you are opening this file name in this mode with f open it will give you the stream pointer. And uh, if the opening has an error, suppose you are opening with the read mode, so the file must exist, suppose the file does not exist, then it will not be able to open, then it will not be able to associate. So, if it does that, if that happens, then it returns a value 0, a null pointer and by that you know that you could not open it successfully, so you exit. Similarly, when you are closing, it uh, returns you a value, typically a value 0 to mean success otherwise you re it returns you an end of file marker which is a special character which which is the marker put at the end of every file meaning that this is the this is a point where there is nothing more in that uh, file structure. So, suppose uh, you could not close because your disk is full. So, it is not possible to flush out the buffer and write the remaining data onto the file because disk does not have space. So, in that case your f close will fail and you will get an EOF as a return value. So, this is the basic uh, you know process. Uh, now, I will quickly go through the functions. So, you know the printf, so I will not uh, detail it anymore you know the use of uh, formats. And so, just uh, you know remember that uh, in this uh, library the function names are done in a very systematic manner. So, f at the end of this name whether you are doing print or we are doing scan is meant to represent format. So, it shows that formatted you are doing it with formatting which means that it will have a format string to say how the conversion has to happen whether it is for output or it is for input. And if you have a f or an s at the beginning f means that you are doing it with the file s means you are doing it with a string buffer. Right. A string buffer could also act as a 
as a source or a destination of your read write operation exactly in the same way. Rest of it is exactly like printf as we have used where by default your file is std out which is always open you do not need to therefore, you, you never needed to open the file because std out is always open. Similarly, when you do scanf when you are doing reading you have the similar uh, format uh, stuff specified and you do not need to open it because it will always use std in and that is always open here when your program starts. So, that is the basic uh, process uh, naturally both printf and uh, I mean all kinds of printfs and uh, scanfs they uh, do the operation of writing or reading and they return a value for printf the return value gives you how many characters you have written and for scanf it gives you how many data elements that you have converted and read. So, these are the uh, so, this is the different kinds of uh, format conversion you have uh, this I have shown in terms of a diagram. So, it always starts with a percentage then you have a flag for alignment and uh, so on. You can specify maximum weight for uh, scanf, minimum weight for printf, you can provide uh, precision for uh, printf and then you provide the size which is uh, I mean you know how much size you want basically. And then you have the conversion code which you have to align with the type of the data that you are printing that you already have seen in the printf. So, here is an example which you can uh, try to uh, run these are different types of data and these are printfs on those and you can see what are the values that are being printed. Just be careful with this uh, particular line because unless you have a 64 bit machine this particular uh, data type declaration and the corresponding percentage LLU uh, writing will not work. It works only in the 64 bit uh, type. So, if your uh, system does not have that then just comment out uh, these two lines and rest of the code will, will work you can see what kind of uh, data you get. And you have all different types of uh, formats that are possible. Uh, both in terms of the data type as well as the way you want to visualize. For example, percentage D, percentage X, percentage O all work with int type, but they write the data in different forms. So, same 17 with percentage D is written as 1 7, but with percentage X is written as 1 1 because it is hexadecimal. So, 1 1 is 1 times 16 plus 1 17. Similarly, if you do percentage O it will be written as 2 1 in the octal system 2 times 8 is 16 plus 1 like this. So, you can you can easily use that you can use these, but if you have user defined data type like a complex as we have seen then you will not be able to extend printf for doing that you have to take them component by component and use them you have seen this before. Here I have given some uh, charts uh, which certainly I am not going to uh, go through right away this chart is for your reference. So, that if you want to uh, use a particular type of format you can get all the information in these charts of different flags you know formatting options of padding justification and so on. Similar uh, exercise uh, will also apply to read in terms of uh, scanf exactly as you have done the formats are more or less similar the format codes are more or less similar and here I have shown just to be confirmed that uh, what uh, you have uh, uh, read, what you have read is what uh, you are getting I have shown the pre corresponding printfs as well you can just run it and get comfortable with the common formats of data that you have. Again the similar conversion chart uh, for the scanf which you can refer to and uh, when you do scanf you could for example, you have given scanf for two values as we are here. So, as I said the scanf will return how many data elements you have converted. So, if you have given for 2 and you have provided only 1 data then certainly you will have an error right or so if it is 1 or you have not provided any data you have just uh, tried to uh, kind of say that there is no data. So, then also you will have error. So, with scanf you will have to be you can use this kind of checks to see 
that you have gotten as much data as you had actually needed to have from the input. Uh, in I O could be unformatted also like you can read character wise and these are the different uh, types of uh, functions that are available. If you are doing it with terminal it is get char and put char which uh, does input output of individual character. Otherwise with any stream you will have get c or f get c, f get c now you know the naming convention. So, f get, get c will get it from std in, f get c will get it from a file similarly put c, f put c, unget c and so on. Here is a text file uh, example given which I will uh, um, not go through, please uh, try it on your system and see how it you get. Besides this you can also have direct input output that is particularly what you want to do with the binary file is take a chunk of data and directly write it. So, here for that you use different uh, functions possibly f write which takes a buffer like this. So, you need to specify that uh, what is the units in that buffer. So, I said the units are there are three units total size is uh, its uh, size of int. So, every chunk has to be size of int say 4 bytes and there will be three such and it has to go to this uh, stream. So, it takes uh, in this way it takes uh, three chunks of ints and put it to the output right. So, that is a that is a basic operation you can see that this is where your marker was before you started doing it and this is where it goes after you are done with it. So, directly using f write you can directly do that. Similarly, there is a version called write which works which does not need the sp out which will work with your std out. You can uh, do a similar uh, stuff with directly taking a structure and writing it in using the f write. You can do the inverse by reading using f read again you need to have the buffer into which you will read the size of every unit and how many units you want to read and then finally, the stream you can this these diagrams will obviously, corresponding to f read there is a read which can happen with the std in. You can read by structures also. So, these are all here here you are not parsing it in terms of uh, specific characters you are just you know taking things in block and reading or writing them. So, here are the two major functions f write and f read which I have already explained here are the details you can go through. Naturally, for uh, you know for using the plus mode uh, the update mode you need to reposition the marker. So, it is possible that you have done some task and you can reposition. So, there are certain uh, functions to do that you can rewind which will bring the file marker from wherever it was to the beginning of the file, but it can be done specifically at different points also. You can also actually you can actually note the current position of the file marker also by a function called f tell. You can reposition the file marker anywhere by doing a f sick operation you can set it to a point you can set it to the end you can set it to the beginning and so on. So, rewind is basically a special case of seek operation. So, these by this you can reposition your marker and then again restart read or write as we had explained in the update operation. So, these are the common functions which you will need for doing this f tell f seek and rewind. So, this brings us to the uh, end of this uh, naturally input output standard I O is a, is a very very big topic. So, I just tried to give you the basic idea of association between file and stream and uh, the buffered uh, input or output that typically goes on through the system for performance and uh, going forward we will see the same view in terms of C++. Thank you very much for your attention.